with that final statement, you can really feel how tragically ironic this war is. The SSK accused science of being dogmatic and holding dominance over the field of knowledge, and yet they're the ones who dominate in their field. They punish or ignore dissenters, seemingly unnecessary or unjustified punishment as well, proudly displaying converts in the SSK. They accuse scientists of manufacturing facts in the lab, when it is in fact they who are the ones who manufacture narratives by denying accurate historical accounts by real historians and possibly creating controversies to support their arguments and in fact claiming conclusions unsupported by their own analysis. So what's so voodoo about them? For me it's that they are what they hate without any self-reflection. They are what they accuse others of motivated by political reasons, not philosophic understanding. It is a cult-like anti-science movement of the political left. I don't know why as yet, but they perceive all of their opposition as right-wing. Now, political tribalism is very powerful on the right and the left. The tribalistic right's anti-science sentiments see science as a secular vehicle of the left. They perceive science as attacking their religious beliefs, spiritual faith, and conservative traditional values, which may include their belief in divine natural gender roles, rituals, man's loving dominance over women, animals, and the environment. They have anthropocentric values, which is everything revolves around humans, or possibly even so-called religious facts like geocentrism, that the earth is the physical center of the universe, or creation stories, the age of the earth, and non-evolutionary beliefs. The tribalistic left's anti-science sentiments see science as an extension of the pompous elite upper class's arrogant dominance over what counts as knowledge, and therefore whose beliefs has value. They see it as merely another outdated social-political power structure of Western imperialism, misogyny, and supremacy associated with the conservative right. Coupled with their desire to treat different classes, cultures, identities, belief systems as equal as if that's required to treat others with equal dignity and respect leads them to attack science. Currently, many use the political spectacles of right versus left to identify or help to identify the organs of an ally or enemy. The tribalistic mentality of us versus them tends to turn everything into a two-party system, placing issues on a one-dimensional spectrum, when in truth issues may be more complicated than that. Now perhaps having only two political parties may contribute to the tribalism and the complexity of the human character becomes more hidden. While I believe calling oneself right or left is relative in that many who call themselves right would in a different more extreme right society call themselves left and many of the left in a different more extreme left society might call themselves right, I do not actually do the philosophy of politics academically to a credible degree. So in truth, I'm not even able to even predict how an argument would be made for an absolute political center. And this show is not encouraging you to a identify your political tribe. Though, as stated admittedly, it may help us to find our enemy's organs. Why I bring this up is how interesting it is that even in a country like the United States, where there is a two-party system, 
we're trying to identify political tribes as usually the first tribalistic location we try to assess. Where currently bipartisanship is incredibly scarce, I find it interesting that in situations where conversation is forcing the tribal spectacles of pro-science versus anti-science instead, that people of the left and the right can come together in attacking science. I'm not sure if those on the right are aware of it, but I am sure that some with anti-science sentiments on the left are not aware that attacking science for the purposes of your organs being towards equality and tolerance and challenging authority like the SSK also provides the same weaponry to attack secular society's ability to demarcate against religious theocrats, denying global warming, pushing homophobia and misogyny with their belief systems, or say, I don't know, trying to teach my Buddhist children Christian religious beliefs while in science class. That's a callback to episode 1. Watch it, and then watch the whole series over again to now and see how this whole story connects. By the way, I don't actually have Buddhist children and I'm not Buddhist. If you were thinking that's my organs, it's just a theoretical example. Now having philosophic understanding and understanding of philosophy allows me to appreciate and demarcate all that falls within the limits of science. But then there are limits. And I'll leave that discussion to later, but I bring it up to point out how having understanding of some philosophy and philosophic understanding often has me against the anti-science tribe, but can in some cases in fact put me against those who are in the pro-science tribe. Because even when it comes to pro-science versus anti-science, it is not really the science that motivates my taking the side. Particularly in this case, as I explained earlier, it's much more about the weapon the enemy is using. The anti-realistic relativistic weapon that they wield, which I will address as my enemy. And I challenge this weaponry, whether it's used against science or anything else for that matter. For now, as I promised, we've reached the portal. It'll take us to the battlefield of metaphysics. I need you to trust me and trust yourself because it may get really wacky in there. When going deep into philosophic issues such as metaphysics, we can get lost. But I need you to remember how this connects to the real world, how it connects to the things we believe and do, and how we run our society. It's much easier to do philosophy and realize how science connects to everything we do and say because there's so much of science in our society right now. But try to remember how this metaphysical stuff will connect through epistemology to science when we're there, okay? Remember what Immanuel Kant says. Metaphysics is a dark ocean, with that shores or a lighthouse, strewn with many a philosophic wreck. Now remember what I say. There is always a way out. There's never an end. Because philosophers keep battling.